it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my wrap up for June 2024. I read a total of 15 books this month so I will be splitting it up into two separate parts. So without further ado, let us get started. The first two books that I'm going to talk about are part of the same series. It is the third and fourth book in the Natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Book three is All In and book four is Bad Blood. I gave book three a five out of five stars. It's definitely my favorite out of the entire series. And then I gave book four a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This series basically follows a group of teenagers who are called naturals and they are hired by the FBI because they have special abilities. In the third book, the group ends up in Las Vegas. They are investigating a string of murders that are taking place in casinos across the city and it is all done by yet another serial killer. There is more of a focus on Sloane in this. In the last two books, we get more of a focus on Cassie and Dean. Sloane is one of my favorite characters, so I loved knowing more about her backstory this time around. This series just has so many twists and turns. I did not see this ending coming. It blew my mind and it made me so excited to pick up the fourth book, which leads me to my review of the fourth book. I give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think it was a really fun conclusion for the series. I honestly didn't think that I would like the series as much as I ended up loving this. The cast of characters is so easy to love and in this one we finally get a backstory on Leah, who is probably the most complex out of all of these characters. This conclusion dives more into the Pythia and Nine storylines, which I thought was really well done. Like I said, I think it was a very good conclusion for the series. I do wish that there was more because I'm gonna miss these characters so much. Like, I wouldn't be mad if we got more books from this world because it is such an addictive series. Next up, I read I Wish You Would by Eva Des Lauriers, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Natalia and Ethan, who have not seen or spoken to each other much since junior prom night, where they almost became more than friends. Ethan is desperate to mend their friendship and will do anything in order to be best friends again. It is now Senior Sunrise, which is a day where the seniors all come together to bond, and they complete a tradition where they write letters to their future selves, which often contain secrets and they seal these letters into a bottle. When Natalia accidentally scatters these letters across the beach, she must work with Ethan in order to gather these letters before others find them and it's kind of the story of that. This was a cute little summer YA romance. I really enjoyed how it took place over one day. This is a dual point of view. We get both Natalia and Ethan's chapters and I did enjoy them both but the miscommunication of these characters drove me insane. Like their entire relationship could have been mended if they had one conversation. Just one but I digress. I do think that the reasoning behind Natalia pulling away from Ethan was very valid, and once we do discover the reasoning, it became a little less frustrating, but still kind of annoying. I really liked once Natalia and Ethan started mending their relationship. You could tell that they just cared so much for each other, and they were just so sweet together. I think that both Ethan and Natalia had a lot of character development in the end, and I really liked how the story ended. The side characters were also so much fun, and I definitely think that they enhanced the story so much for me. I also think that just the writing style and some of the quotes in this were gorgeous, so I recommend this book. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is really well written. The next book I have is Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan and I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This takes place in 1999 in Southwest Texas. The Evans women have one job to keep the undead dead and they do this through the disguise of running a funeral home. It has been 15 years since they have come face to face with Estragoy but when the town gossip Mina Jean Murphy arrives on their table and then sits up very much alive they realize that it is now time once again to take action and it's the story of that. I really liked how we got four generations of the Evans women and I loved learning more about each of them as the story progressed. I think that the family dynamics were amazing to follow. I do think that this was a lot of fun but at times it became very repetitive so it started to drag a little bit for me. I did listen to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did an amazing job with these characters. It is a multiple point of view story and it could get confusing at times with so many points of views but I did enjoy my time reading it nonetheless. I am definitely intrigued to see where the story goes from here since we did end up on a little bit of a cliffhanger so I do want to know what happens but I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. 
Next up, I read Draw Down the Moon by PC Cast and Kirsten Cast, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This one follows Ren Nightingale and Lee Young, who are best friends. Lee has always had magical abilities, where Ren has none. However, on her 18th birthday, Ren gains magical abilities, which allows her to attend the Academia de Luna with Lee. The school hosts these magical trials, which allows them to determine who is going to be on the Magical Council and Lee is determined to gain a spot but he also wants to protect Ren since he has loved her secretly since childhood and he wants to protect her from the secrets that seem to be coming to fruition. I love the House of Night series by these authors and they were truly the books that got me into reading. I know a lot of people it was Twilight but for me House of Night loved it. So I was so excited to read these books because I was hoping for kind of the same nostalgia feeling and honestly this was very similar to that series. It is definitely geared towards a more YA audience and the characters felt more on the younger side as well. I really liked how we got both Ren and Lee's point of views. I think that that really helped understand the characters on a deeper level. I really liked the magic system in this and I think that the school setting was really well done. I am definitely intrigued to see where the next installment takes the story because we are left on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So overall, I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was fun. The next book I read was Circle of Shadows by Evelyn Skye and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows 18 year old Sora who is a Taiga apprentice. She is in her final year of school and she is bonded with Damon which means that he is her Gemina which means that they share a mental connection. A decade ago Prince Jin was defeated and that allowed Empress Akin to rise onto the throne. When Sora and Damon are out on patrol they witness something that is very concerning and so they need to report back to the Empress before it's too late. So this was enjoyable for the most part, but I do think that it was way too long for the story that was being told. There were just so many scenes that could have been taken out altogether or shortened a drastic amount and we would have still gotten the same story. I think that it started off very strong and then it started to drag as the story continued. I really liked the work hard mischief harder tagline in this and I think that it was incorporated really well into the story. I also thought the bonded warriors concept was really interesting and I loved how they were able to communicate telepathically. I think that the world building was really well done but I do think that the magic system was a little confusing. I thought it was a little bit weird that they could literally just think something like climb the wall like a spider and then all of a sudden they could do that. I also didn't particularly enjoy the romance. It felt like it came very much out of left field and it didn't make a lot of sense why it took the route that it did. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that. But I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars in the end. It was fun while it lasted but a little bit too long. And the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finlay and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Ryan Richardson whose life completely changes when a suspicion falls onto him after the disappearance of his girlfriend Allison Lane during their senior year. He leaves town and changes his name, trying to leave his past behind. He is now attending law school and he is on a trip to Italy when he gets a call from his father stating that Allie's car has been found in the lake and it contained a letter with her handwriting that said if something happens to me and this causes the case to be reopened. I listened to this on audiobook. The chapters are so short so that definitely kept my attention. There were a lot of time jumps which did keep me invested in the story but there were so many points of views that I became a little bit confused after a while. I did really like how there were multiple storylines going on and then they all became intertwined in the end. It was definitely an action-packed story and there were new things being unveiled every chapter which I enjoyed. I did finish it very quickly. I actually listened to it on the airplane to PEI earlier this month. It was a good time. It was a very quick popcorn thriller so if you're looking for something fast-paced and fun then this one might be for you but I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. All right everybody so those were the first seven books that I read for the month of June 2024. If you are interested in the other books that I read this month that will be uploaded soon onto my channel. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!